Max, what do you make, first of all, uh, of uh, George Papandreou's decision to hold a referendum? I mean, this has been a bailout deal that he's been fighting to get, and now he's calling for a referendum. Well, he's been put in a very difficult position for a number of years, going all the way back to when Greece joined the euro and Goldman Sachs was involved in 16 distinct cases of accounting fraud to hide Greek debt. This put Papandreou and the Greek government in a terrible position going forward. And recently, as they've tried to negotiate their way through this collapse of credit around the world, again, he's put in a horrible position. He's doing the right thing here by calling on this referendum because he gives the citizens a chance to vote on their sovereignty if, if they want to be sovereign or not. This is the stakes in the bailout. They can get money but lose their sovereignty. Many Greeks would prefer to keep their sovereignty and um, go forward from there. Speaking about whether Greece is now looking for sovereignty or rather it's looking to stay in the euro, we had two different uh, views expressed here. First of all, besides the speculation that George Papandreou may be making this announcement for his own political reasons, but do you think now that the Greek protesters can now say to themselves, OK, now the authorities have realized that this bailout is not going to work out for us, that it's going to bring even more debt for us and it's not the way forward? Well, the global banking system as it exists today needs to be euthanized. And Papadreou has the position, the opportunity to be the Dr. Kevorkian to perform this mercy killing. As was uh, stated earlier, if Greek goes down, so does the Eurozone, so does the global banking system because they're all connected through credit default swaps. We need to have the global banking system collapse. We need a total reset in the global banking system. Uh, firms on Wall Street like Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan need to be euthanized so that we can be re uh, rebuild a system that's not run by people like John Corzine, who was running Goldman Sachs, then he became governor of New Jersey. Now he's been caught stealing $600 million from clients in his new hedge fund, MF Global. So he's a, a financial terrorist. Uh, these people need to be euthanized. And Papandreou has an opportunity to perform the Dr. Kevorkian function, put the banks mm. out of their misery, and do us all a favor. Okay, in, in Athens now, Mr. Shakuris, let's have your view, viewpoint on sure. this. Mm. Well, now, uh, because the question of sovereignty is asked again and again and again, let's put things clear. Greece, as any other EU member unit, has been willingly giving part of its sovereignty and taking the benefits. It's the same thing for the other, peop the other countries which are participating in the, uh, in the debt reduction and the IMF, ECB and EU, European Commission promoted measures of austerity. And this is something that will not basically change something. You know what the difference is between the Troika member, the, the previous package and the, and the current package? Is that the Troika should not come only one every three months, but it should have a permanent presence in Greece. So That's the big difference. Of what sovereignty? This is, excuse me for my language, but there is no problem with sovereignty. What well, sovereignty? Okay, Mr. Shakir is What well, sovereignty? If What's I the sovereignty this, issue? I don't understand. Right. Well, I have no. I, under, I don't understand the position of the speaker in Athens. He sounds like one of the collaborators during the Nazi occupation of Greece in World War II. Uh, furthermore, he's saying that um, <laughs> Greece has been giving up their sovereignty. A, every along the way, all along the way. You should be very careful he, what you're talking like, about. Okay, it, okay. Uh, let, let, me let me finish my point! Let me finish my point! Let me finish my point! All right? Okay, uh, go ahead. He sounds crazy. like he's defending a rapist. Yeah. He sounds like he's defending a rapist. Uh, I wonder how his wife and daughter would feel if they were raped and he's defending he, he, a rapist. Greece is being okay. financially he's raped and racist. this guy is defending financial rape. He should be ashamed of himself and he should get out of the country immediately because he's a collaborator right. with financial terrorists. Okay, uh, you, you Theodore, are, let's, are, okay, let's need, just uh, move on professionally with this, Theodore. Bring it on! Bring, right. it on okay. Bring it on, buddy! Okay. Bring it okay. on! Bring Theodore. it on! <laughs> we'll, just discuss, we'll just discuss the issue that's been raised by a lot of protesters in the streets, Theodore, if I could I'll leave these last comments to you. Some of our analysts have been arguing that the way out for Greece would be actually to leave the euro, but apparently you don't think that's the solution. Let's have your if, say on that. If Greece gets out of the euro, she will return to the 1940s or to the 1950s. What are we talking about? This is not an option. Well, uh, this is not an option for the benefit yeah, of Greece yeah. itself. So... What is the real question? What is, what is at stake? At stake is a, big, a, ma a major issue regarding the future of this country. Now, I am not a proponent of the government. The government has made a lot of mistakes in trying to implement 
a recipe which might not have been the best case for a country within Europe. But there have been, been positive examples of an IMF strategy. Turkey mm. is the most successful one. And it's not just that far back. It's only 10 years before. It's a decade before. And they managed to pull through. Mm. Secondly, uh, this is not an IMF-run program. This is a European Commission and European Union-run program. Especially the second package is very important. It's primarily European money supporting a, a debt reduction recipe which, if implemented, could have a lot of positive effect. I'm not saying that that by itself would be going to resolve the problem. Hmm. But there are several tens of billions of euros in terms of financial funds, in terms of development programs, through the European Commission structural funds, as well as an extra uh, component of, 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 of billions of euros, about 15 billion euros, which are there, which are on the table, and we need to find a way to be able to, uh, to use this, okay. to use it in the best possible structure. And that is the real challenge. It's not talking about going back to occupation. What kind of occupation we're talking about? Okay. Okay. There is no occupation other than the stupidity of some people saying that we're returning in the drachma, we'd actually sell. If we do that, we're going to triple the national debt. Right. We will be indebted until the end of the 24th century in Greece. Okay. That, that, that is a view that... That's the real problem. Okay. Okay. That is a view that's not shared by a lot of protesters. That's uh, Theodore's view there. Yes, let's but the protest, my okay. dear lady, is, are not the majority of the country. Okay. So let me just follow up quickly. Uh, the speaker in Athens just a moment ago was saying that Papandreou uh, could be guilty of maybe some, making some bad choices, uh, but that's all. But that's, of course, false. Uh, he was caught red-handed uh, in a $16 billion credit to false swap theft a few years ago that he engineered for his insider friends. That's tyrannical right there. Uh, the man is a complete menace. And even the people of Greece don't accept the fact that they're being controlled by a cartel, by financial terrorists. It's a sad day in Greece. Now, how this is going to affect Italy, of course, it is contagion. It is spreading to Italy, but that's a good thing because we want this total banking system to collapse mm. because we want to reset the banking system because it's run by harsh uh, financial terrorists and we need to do something about it. Right. And if this is the beginning of the end for financial terrorism, then that's a great day. Thank you very much. Financial journalist and broadcaster there, Max Kaiser, joining us live from Paris. A big thank you as well to senior economic analyst Theodore Chakiris in Athens thank with us. Well.